Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I wanted to do a quick update video for the Odroid Go Ultra. Um, so we've gone ahead and we've included multi-arch in this build. What that means is we have the ARM HF or 32-bit and Arch 64 or 64-bit libraries included, as well as a working SDL2 for both 32 and 64-bit. So I'm going to launch Retro Arch 32 quickly. You see it's green here. Then you go to 64. You see the color's different. Orange, black. I'll give you a quick uh, example here. It works exactly the same as 64-bit, so you want to hold these bottom two buttons for the menu, or double-click this button up here to exit. Now, I will talk to Christian about adding a few more ARMHF cores here, but this is what's here currently. There is a core downloader list. It's enabled on both 32 and 64-bit and it's using uh, Christian Haitian's repo that we all contributed to over the last couple of years. The same is true here on the 64-bit, as I stated. All these cores are able to be... There's some that aren't even installed, like Melon DS, because we have Drastic as standalone, and there's no point in using RetroArch to do DS when you have Drastic, and it works better. Somebody in the forum had mentioned that Easy RPG was not working properly. So I went ahead and fixed that. This actually looks really good. Easy RPG in and of itself looks really nice. I also went ahead and replaced Emulation Station with a version that was uh, built to use SDL. The reason for that is, as you can see, I've been using the, the joysticks here to navigate the menu. On the current builds, both stock and retro arena, you have to use the D-pad. I prefer to use the joystick, so I re-enabled it. And if anybody wants to reconfigure their controllers in Emulation Station, I also added the Configure Input option back. Screen savers do work as well, both video and game screens. Give everybody a quick look at what's here right now. There's actually a few more systems. I only have, I think, 85 of 100 on my SD card. I ran out of space. Saturn, Atmoswave, Naomi, and Dreamcast still use Retro Run currently. I am working on being able to use it in Retro Arch. The current holdup is that there's something wrong with OpenGLES in the sense that. Um, I can use it in RetroArch if I want to use the XMB menu or things like that, but as soon as I try to launch a game using OpenGLES, it fails, and we're trying to track down the error. It's a seg fault of types. But we're working on it. As you can see, either joystick can be used to navigate the menu. There are still a couple more things I wanted to show you guys. I just want to wrap through the menu first so you can see. Get a general idea of what's here. I've currently removed LCD games from the public build as MAME non-year is having the same issue as Flycast where it doesn't want to run properly. 
The cores 2003 and 2010 both work fine. CDI is still working as well. Turn autofocus off, see if that helps. I mean, turn it back on. As you can see, CDI works. Also, before I forget to mention it, I wanted to give a shout out to Johnny on Flame for his work to get SDL2 working without relying on LibGoU, which is a special library created by Crash Override for the Odroid Go Ultra, the same as he had created Go2 for the Odroid Go Advance. Retro Run does use it, and it is included in the build. However, SDL does not use it. And almost everything besides Retro Run is using SDL. Now, GameCube is really a bit of a mixed bag. It's not going to run the harder-to-run games at all currently. I say currently because if we can get the later kernel working, we should be able to get some sort of Vulcan support and better... I guess better graphics support in general. But currently there's some custom INI files you can make. You can run the CPU at max clock speed, which will hurt your battery life. But You can hear there's a bit of lag already. It's not perfect, but I wouldn't call it unplay. You'll see what I mean. It's still playable, but... So as you can see, there is a bit of lag, but it's definitely still playable. Not every game is like that. You're going to have to go through and test them on your own. Just figure it out as you go. If you want to mess with the screen configuration for Drastic, you have to go into the menu there. I'm 
another game I want to show is Contra because when it lags, you can really see it in the uh, the gunshots or the bullets for the gun. So I think it's a good frame of reference, literally, because you're gonna see the frames. Oh, actually. I may have forgotten to set the hotkey, which is fine because it's something that you can easily do yourself. By going to input, hotkeys, menu toggle is start plus. Oh, I see what I did wrong. It actually has nothing to do with it. It used to be these two buttons, and now it's start and select, which are these two. That's the problem. See? There we go. Now I should be able to go to... Oh, good luck to me remembering where it is off the top of my head. I'm trying to remember where show FPS is, but I honestly don't. I know I'm in the right area, but I don't remember where it is. Either way, watch the gunshots. Everything looks good there. Oops, wrong button. PSP itself has pretty decent performance as well. It's it's a mixed bag still, but it's this is definitely more powerful than the Odroid Go Super. Well, let's just go right for the hardest first, why not? I haven't even tried this myself yet. I mean, I'm sure it works, but... Let's just take a quick peek while we're here. Frame skipping, what is this? Let's try that. I'd skip this if I could, but I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, 
that's definitely a little slow. Let's try frame skip one. I don't really like frame skip, to be honest. Using one or in a rare situation two is can can be okay, but I don't I don't like it. Oh, that's not bad. Honestly, don't feel like we should need frame skip on this chipset, but if frame skip is needed, one isn't terrible. Saturn, of course, uses Retro Run, as does Naomi and Dreamcast. I'm just making sure there's nothing else we need to quickly discuss. No, I think that's going to about do it for now. So this build is obviously being updated every couple of days. The one that you're seeing in this video right now is available. It's version 232. And that's about it. There'll be another video in another couple few days as more builds become available. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.